Hey, what's up, everybody? We got another really good one today. A Short History of Humanity, A New History of Old Europe by biochemist and geneticist Johannes Krauss and journalist and editor Thomas Trapp. Johannes Krauss was the founding director of the Max Planck Institute for Science of Human History in Germany and professor of paleogenetics at the University of Tübingen, also in Germany. He's the department head of archaeogenetics at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology and the Max Planck Harvard Center for Archaeoscience of the Ancient Mediterranean. He's one of the people responsible for the discovery of the Denisovans. He was also a member of Svante Pabo's team when they did their Nobel Prize winning work on the Neanderthal genome. So he's got some pretty serious credentials. And they really give you a good idea of what this book is about. If you watched my video on David Reich's Who We Are and How We Got Here, this book was like a more digestible and newer version of that, mixed with the last book I reviewed, Homo Sapiens Rediscovered. And for being such a serious scientist, Krauss writes a surprisingly well put together book. Maybe that's where Thomas Trapp came in, but I've heard nothing but high praise for this book, and it seems to be pretty universally loved including by me. When it comes to learning about ancient humans, we have all these different kinds of specialists who can each provide unique ways of obtaining and understanding data. Archaeologists, paleontologists, linguists, and evolutionary biologists, to name a few, all allow us to learn things that only their field could have worked out. But one of the more recent additions to the scientific front, and arguably the most valuable as far as the ability to obtain and interpret evidence, is the geneticist and the biochemist. I hope none of you cultural anthropology or paleontology fans take offense to that, but the things that we can learn from genome sequencing is just incredible, as this book shows. Krauss actually stresses the importance of multidisciplinary collaboration. When all these different specialists contribute pieces to the puzzles, we get a much more complete and often surprising story, and it's just incredible and awe-inspiring the things that we've been able to learn when it comes to human civilizations 10,000 years ago. And that's what you'll find in this book. A Short History of Humanity focuses mostly on Europe around the Mediterranean and mostly around the Neolithic period, but it does go back quite a bit further when discussing the common ancestors of humans, Neanderthals, and Denisovans. Using his expertise in DNA sequencing and analysis, Krauss takes us through some of the major population migrations leading into the Neolithic period in Europe. He also explains some of the important factors surrounding them. We see how after the last gla glacial maximum, the ice is retreating up to the north, opening new lands for human habitation. We look at the spread of agriculture and the paradigm-shattering changes that it has brought for our species. We see how hunter-gatherers lived alongside farmers and how ending nomadism gave rise to major population hubs, the birth of commerce, the creation of the patriarchy, the spread of disease, the transition from the Stone Age to copper and bronze, and how all these things meant such monumental changes for a once humble bipedal ape wandering around Africa. This book is filled with this stuff, but it stays with a couple of different main focuses, one being DNA, because it's comparing DNA that has allowed Krauss and people like him, like David Reich and Swante Pabo, to learn so much about the movements and the mixings of different ancient populations. Here's a quote from the book. Genetic sequencing has enabled us to read archaic and contemporary genomes as if they were journals, chronicling personal stories of migration and genetic intermingling. This is ancestry explored in the ancient Neolithic period. The other main focus of this book is evolution. It's just such a big part of why things were happening the way they were. For example, Krauss talks about the spread of a mutation in the gene responsible for expressing or suppressing lactase, the enzyme that allows us to break down the lactose in milk, and how that changed the subsistence strategies for those who had it. 
Kraus also led the team responsible for sealing the identity of the bacteria that caused the Black Death, the plague. And there's a chapter on that in this book. And that was interesting enough to make me go and look at some other books on the plague. Really, this book made me want to go back and reread David Reich's Who We Are and How We Got Here. Because when I read that book, it was the first time reading a book like that, and I didn't retain much from it, despite it being incredibly dense. As I said, a short history of humanity is much more easily digestible than Who We Are and How We Got Here, and I did find it to be more enjoyable as well. This really was a well-written book. It does cover a number of interesting subjects, but like Who We Are and How We Got Here, the main subject of this book is population immigration and populations mixing and the genetic as well as cultural impacts of these mixings. A message Krauss makes is that immigration has always been something that we humans do, and in fact we owe a lot to this. He also looks into the future and sees that our genes as a species will continue to become less distinct from each other as we continue to move around the globe and mix together. There's also dis some discussion on CRISPR in the book, and I won't go into CRISPR here, but I'll put a link in the description to a book I reviewed on CRISPR if you're interested in that. Toward the end of this book, he kind of takes a stand for genetics supporting unity of people, and he, he explains how flawed the idea of trying to categorize people by race and skin color is, and he does this with examples as a geneticist, which is another thing that we saw in David Reich's book. I don't know, what do you guys think about this topic? I once commented on a video about race that race is a flawed idea, or at least arbitrary, and a lot of people didn't like me saying that, but this is precisely the point Krauss makes in the end of this book. Okay, that's it for this one, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. This book combines a number of very fascinating topics. Human history, genetics, language, world colonization, disease, mutation, and evolution, and more. If you're interested in these kinds of subjects, you can also check out Johannes's lectures and interviews on YouTube. I watched a couple, and they're definitely worth your time. And you'll definitely want to check out A Short History of Humanity by Johannes Krauss and Thomas Trapp.